Hello from Wimbledon in southwest London. Today you'll be joining me on a quick trip northwest to St Pancras International with Thameslink in standard class. Immediately after entering the station, you can find a watch repair shop, a Greg's and the ticket office. There's also an alternative entrance located next to the Centre Court shopping centre. There are large screens at the entrance displaying the train times, which shows my train, the 1337 to St Albans, as on time. Past the barriers, you can find another array of shops and eateries. One thing you're not short of at Wimbledon is places to eat. Wimbledon was opened on the 21st of May 1838 as Wimbledon and Merton, with the station being renamed to simply Wimbledon in 1909. May 2000 saw the reopening of the tram to Croydon, which can be found on platform 10. The station now sees pre-pandemic levels of 17 million people using the station each year, with that dropping to just 4 million during Covid. Wimbledon reminds me of Richmond a little, with the terminus of the district line also being located here. As it was a bit of a grim day, I decided to take a seat in the waiting room guarded from the inevitable British weather. Bang on time, our train arrives into Wimbledon at 37 minutes past one. Thameslink used just the one platform at Wimbledon, number nine. Seating is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. This includes first class, located at the front and back of our train. Seating is unreserved for today, so I'll take this forward facing window seat for the start of our journey. and we depart Wimbledon on time at 37 minutes past one. Total scheduled journey time for today is 41 minutes and will reach a top speed of 100 miles per hour. Located on the far side of the station, we can find a Southwestern Railway class 455 about to depart for London Waterloo. You can check my report on these trains in the right hand corner of your screen now. Mere minutes after departing Wimbledon, we call it Hayden's Road which is the nearest station to League Two side AFC Wimbledon. Toilets can be found in four out of the eight coaches on this train. However, while they were flat out horrendous, this is the problem with not having guards aboard trains. The cleanliness was okay I guess, and everything worked as expected. There were also baby changing facilities, which is good to see, however it was probably covered in spray paint.
I'm now going to move to the rear portion of first class. As on all Thames Link trains, the rear first class compartment is declassified. First class comes in a 2 plus 2 configuration and is actually the same seats you can find on the IET units in standard class. We then call it Streatham. Right, time for a seat tour. In first class, there's a large table, perfect for working or eating at. Down to the side, you can find armrests either side of you. Comfort of these seats is all right, and much better than in standard class. One pro of first class over standard is the addition of plug sockets. There's one per person. Up here, you can find luggage space, as well as the addition of luggage racks, which are needed as this train calls at Gatwick Airport. Comfort of these seats is pretty good. You could easily fit four people here without much discomfort. We then call it Tulse Hill, and due to a short platform, the rear coach doors do not open at this station. Wi-Fi is not available on this train, which was surprising, as most Thameslink trains usually offer Wi-Fi. If you're enjoying the video so far, why not give it a like, comment and share, as well as subscribe to the channel. You can also go and check my Patreon and channel memberships out, link in description. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. As we head out of the suburbs of London, we call it Elephant and Castle. The Bakerloo and Northern Line also call here. We then call it Blackfriars, which I think must be one of the most scenically impressive stations in London, with views across the Thames. This 
station is London Blackfriars. This train terminates at St Albans City. City Thameslink is up next as we head into the Thameslink core. Our final intermediate stop of the day is Fangden, about five minutes before we reach St Pancras. Here we pass the old King's Cross Thameslink station, which was closed permanently in 2007, after the station was moved to St Pancras. It now serves as an emergency exit for King's Cross Station. And after just 40 minutes, we're fast approaching St Pancras, so I'll give my thoughts on the trip now. Thameslink serves a very useful commuter line for Londoners, and is not designed for comfort, and that showed in today's journey. The Class 700s are newish trains, but do lack plug sockets in standard class, which I think is very poor. See, these trains are not designed for long journeys. They're designed for ferrying people from one place to another in high numbers, of which they do a very good job. Now onto the price. I paid just £2.50 for my Anytime Day single, using my 1617 rail card for 50% off. This, in my opinion, offers decent value, However, if you had to take this train for commuting, the costs would add up. And we arrive into St Pancras, bang on time, at 18 minutes past 2. Well I do hope you enjoyed today's video, if you did please give it a like, comment and share as well as check out my Patreon and channel memberships. Oh and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for videos every Friday at 5pm. Thank you.